Well, by now you've heard about the catastrophe that struck a bridge in Baltimore. And um, I just got a couple of points I'd like to show you. And um, actually some video footage that for whatever reason, the media isn't showing. All right, it's Tuesday, March 26th, 2024. I'm Stuart Allister. A stunning bridge collapse at the port of Baltimore. The entire key bridge is in the harbor. The Francis Scott Key Bridge plunging into the water overnight after it was hit by a cargo container ship. I wanted to know what the bang was. Ship hit the key bridge, sinking. The bridge is gone. Holy hell. Video shows smoke coming from the ship before it hit the bridge. The bridge is normally a major artery spanning the Patapsco River. And though the collapse happened in the early morning hours, 1.30 a.m., video shows cars crossing moments before the ship hits. The traffic then paused, but vehicles were still on the bridge as it then crumbled into the water. Fire department and Coast Guard teams rushed to the scene, rescuers searching the water overnight. Still very much in an active search and rescue posture. Our sonar has detected the presence of vehicles submerged in the water. The ship is an almost 950-foot container vessel called Dolly, headed from Baltimore to Sri Lanka. The Synergy Marine Corporation saying it collided with the bridge pillar and all of its crew members, including the two pilots, have been accounted for. The ship reportedly lost power while in the water. This morning, with the sun rising, search teams continue looking for any survivors in the water as the Baltimore area reels from a major collapse. A stunning bridge collapse at the port of so major collapse. Um, which okay. By now you've heard about this. Um, so I want to show you the importance of this port. Okay. From the New York Times, Baltimore's port handled a record amount of cargo last year. This is the port in which this catastrophe happened. And so I just want you to be fully aware of how important this port is and show you some video footage from uh, Andy No, journalist, that for whatever reason I had not seen in the media. Before we go any further, why don't you wreck that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and press that notification bell so you never miss an episode. Baltimore support handles a record amount of cargo last year. So keep this in mind. The collapse of Francis Scott Key Bridge has brought the port of Baltimore, an important trade hub, to a halt. Um, I don't think this has anything to do with anything, but I'm just going to point it out. Francis Scott Key, the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. Um, I don't think that that's significant in any way, but just in case there are those of you out there who don't know who Francis Scott Key is, well, he's owed some tribute. The Star Spangled Banner. That's kind of a big deal. The port handled a record amount of foreign cargo last year, and it was the 17th biggest port in the nation overall in 2021, ranked by total tons according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. It ranks first in the United States for the volume of automobiles and light trucks it handles and for vessels that carry wheeled cargo, including farm and construction machinery, according to a statement by the governor, Wes Moore. Around the world, about 40 ships, including 34 cargo vessels, have Baltimore listed as a destination, including 10 commercial ships with anchors dropped in nearby waters, according to marine traffic, which tracks ships. Georgios, I have no idea how to pronounce that name, 
who analyzes global shipping for marine traffic, said he expects the bridge collapse to cause shipping delays. Hmm. It'll cause shipping delays. Well, that would be expected, right? Quote, we do expect there to be a ripple effect, but it's a bit too early to say what the impact will be, he said. Ships headed to Baltimore with cargo to unload may instead go to ports in New Jersey or North Carolina, he said. The port, which supports more than 15,000 jobs, has also increasingly catered to large container ships like the Dolly, the 948-foot-long cargo vessel carrying goods for the shipping giant Mersic that hit the pillar of the bridge around 1.30 a.m. on Tuesday. The Dolly spent two days in Baltimore's port before setting off toward the 1.6-mile Francis Scott Key Bridge. The arrival of large container ships to the port continues to demonstrate Baltimore's capability of handling supersized vessels, Governor Moore said in a statement. The largest container ship ever to enter the port as of February arrived last year with the capacity to carry more than 15,000 20 foot containers. State owned terminals managed by the Maryland Port Administration and privately owned terminals in Baltimore transported a record 52.3 million tons. 52.3 million tons of foreign cargo in 2023 worth $80 billion. The port handled nearly 850,000 cars and light trucks last year, more than any other U.S. port for the past 13 years. Just let me read that sentence once again. The port handled nearly 850,000 cars and light trucks last year, more than any other U.S. port for the past 13 years. Other materials transported in large volumes through the city's port include coal, coffee, and sugar. It was ninth busiest. It was the ninth busiest port in the nation last year for receiving foreign cargo in terms of volume and value. The bridge, the bridge's collapse will also disrupt cruises traveling in and out of Baltimore. Norwegian uh, cruise uh, cruise line last year began a new fall with blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that. I just wanted you to see the significance of this port. I wanted you to see how important this port is to American commerce. I, I wanted you to see, to get a sense of, of, of the gravity of, of where we are since this bridge was collapsed. Um, and now I want to show you a video. For some reason, I, I, I didn't see it anywhere else. I got this from uh, Andy No. He's a journalist on X. And... Um, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to show it to you, and then we'll discuss it. Now, what the news media have been showing you is about, I don't know, two seconds before it hit the column. This is taking it a bit further. What do you think about this as you watch? Here, look again.
does it appear that the ship is actually steering toward the column? Because I'm not a, you know, cargo ship pilot. But to me, it looked like it was actually turning toward the column. In fact, I would say that had the ship right there just kept straight, they would have been fine. Maybe just, you know, barely escaping the column. But when you look at this, it looks like it's turning into the column. And then you see this. Continue to look at the lights on the ship because they go out. Just before it hits the column, they come back on. Um, now they're back on. Now, there has been commentary, theories, about two things. DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, run amok because, dear Lord, DEI has been unleashed on this country to a biblical proportion and people will lose their lives because of it. Now, people are saying this could be the product of DEI. I give that uh, 20%. I give it 20% credibility. Then there were others who said it was a cyber attack. I'm going to give more weight to that. Um, because as, my, as I watch this, it, be, it, is, it is really clear that the video, that the ship is actually turning into the column. Now, I don't know how, um, like I said, I, I, I've never piloted a cargo ship. I've never, never piloted anything. So I don't know how that works. I do know that at some point, even way back here, drop anchor. Just drop anchor. Uh, once again, I'm not a pilot, so what the heck do I know? But it seems to me, the way it's headed right there, it's not headed for the column. But as it goes further and further and further, it turns right into the column. Now, given this, the lights go out. given the importance that I just read for you, $80 billion in volume. That's why I'm leaning towards a cyber attack. That's why I'm leaning that way. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just like you. I'm looking at how, what, what this is. Could be just an accident. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being totally serious. The ship malfunctions and steers itself into the column. Okay. Hey, uh, crazy things like that happens all the time. But wow. If it, if, if it were a cyber attack, Wow, they, they, they chose a really important, you know, port. I mean, they, they, they really would be crippling. They would be crippling uh, American infrastructure. When, when, when you're doing that type of volume. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know what you think. Um, I, I, all, of, all of this very beginning stages. In fact, when I first saw um, the video, I, I thought it was like, oh, well, that, that probably didn't happen. Uh, that, that, that didn't happen, it's ridiculous. 
even when you watch the, 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 the bridge as it goes down, and I guess I'm so used to seeing movies and everything you know, was done in slow motion, the bridge collapsed so fast. It was just like that. It was over. You do know how it probably took more than a second to build it, right? So I'm, I'm just pointing out how important this port is to U.S. commerce. I'm pointing out the volume, the transactions that are happening in this country. And, and, and I would like to emphasize one, one small choice, uh, one small point here where, where it says, it's kind of like in the middle of the paragraph there, the port handled nearly 850,000 cars and light trucks last year, more than any other port, more than any other U.S. port for the past 13 years. So this has been like a hotspot doing really good for our economy and our commerce. And so if it was a cyber attack, boy, they really lucked up. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I may be making a, a, a hill out of a mole or a mole out of a hill or a hill mole, I don't know. But it just looked odd to me. Interested to know what you think. All right, that's it for now. Hey, if you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe. And if you're following me on Rumble, please press that follow button. And until the next time, God bless.